So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to meditate together. And um, I certainly appreciate the chance to meditate with others. And <clears throat> so uh, this week in these morning talks, the theme is the Pali word sadhas, S-A-D-D-H-A, often translated into English as faith, sometimes as confidence, and sometimes as conviction. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about the aspect of sada that fits the English word conviction. In my vocabulary, the word conviction is a very powerful word. In fact, I, I feel some caution around the word conviction because if someone has a strong conviction about something, it can be a little dangerous. They could just go ahead and do what they feel is right, um, irregardless of what other people, the impact on other people. And conviction can also be uh, quite inspiring because it's the strength of confidence, of belief in something that uh, can uh, really override a lot of the obstacles that might arise in a person's life or obstacles for the activity they're doing. And conviction can give effort, the things we try to do, a sense, sense of persistence in spite of the difficulties. And so when this word sada has a very strong association in Buddhism with an activity, the activity of practice, the activity of spiritual development and growth, the activity of uh, being mindful and present for our experience. And to have a strong conviction that this is valuable is uh, really then allows a person to persist, rain or shine, to persist whether it's easy or whether it's difficult. Because the conviction really clear, it's certain. There's a certainty in conviction. Now the English word conviction um, you know, is a, has a Latin root, meaning uh, uh, kind of to conquer, to conquer with something. Uh, the uh, con means with, and the uh, viction, it's like victory or victor, uh, is a Latin word, uh, vicera, I think. And um, uh, to conquer, uh, to win, and in the circles that I travel, where we, circles of English-speaking society, there's been a strong uh, tendency to want to downplay <clears throat> uh, war imagery or metaphors for Buddhist practice because it seems violent. And, but in fact, we find in, in uh, Buddhism that the metaphors of war uh, are often used uh, in, uh, in Buddhism but not for purpose of war, not for the purposes of violence, but to emphasize, I think, the, the, sometimes the heroic effort that's needed, the strong effort we need to overcome things which are afflictive, overcome aspects of our inner life which are causing harm. And we certainly don't want to be, uh, be um, I think that the danger of this war kind of metaphor of conquering is uh, sometimes reinforces the idea some people have that part of who they are is wrong or bad or and it kind of reinforces a self-criticism or a self-deprecation that many people are struggling with already and so we have to be very careful with this language but uh, maybe occasionally it's useful to use it and um, and that uh, this idea of uh, conviction arises in Buddhism 
uh, when someone has overcome challenges, especially their own psychological challenges having to do with some forms of clinging or attachment that they have, some form of craving or being caught or entangled. When I first started, first years in which I was doing Buddhist practice, I was kind of in awe of uh, from time to time when my meditation got, um, uh, my mind got soft enough, quiet enough, still enough in meditation that the thoughts and feelings and motivations that I had been entangled with and swirling with and caught up in and agitated in in everyday life quieted down. And to feel the quiet and peace that was absent of those that swirl and agitation, it felt like a homecoming. It felt like now I'm really myself. Now I can breathe. There's breathing room for me here. And now I'm no longer in a certain way distracted from myself, distracted from life. I'm here in a full way. And what had happened in the, one way of understanding what had happened in the course of those meditations is that I had overcome or settled or conquered temporarily uh, these forces that, ha- that were, had, uh, had in the past conquered me. They had won over me. And I was just going along as kind of the, kind of the, you know, under command of these mental forces that were running me. And, and it became so clear that I was under control of them when I sat to meditate and felt a swirl being pulled into those thoughts over and over again. And so to no longer be caught by those and to have overcome them, become free of them, was really uh, eye-opening to me. And I became convinced that this was possible. I had a clear sense that uh, I didn't have to live in the agitated mode the rest of my life. I became, uh, had a conviction that yes, there is another way. And, um, and that other way is to, you know, we could say to become free of those Another way of saying it is uh, to have conquered them, to have uh, somehow got the upper hand over them. And the advantage of using words like conquer is it really implies a a strength and a power um, of certainty, a power of practice, a power of presence. Whereas freedom has a feeling like it doesn't necessarily imply that. It just means like now nothing's bothering me. Um, and I can just go along as I did before. But if, there, if we really have become stronger through the practice, then the practice is more portable. We can meet further obstacles and have the conviction, yes, I could do this, I could practice through this. The, um, um, but remember that uh, this idea of uh, conviction that I'm talking about today is it comes in the wake of really seeing the difference between being caught and not being caught. And that that's what gives born to conviction. It's not a conviction necessarily in a creed or a belief, but rather in a possibility of personal transformation, of change. In uh, uh, the Buddha's uh, teaching, uh, he has a particular word that could be translated as conviction, that's related to the word sada. It's a it's a partner to sada. It's faith that has been confirmed, confirmed faith. And uh, the word is avecha pasada. And um, avecha means uh, something like comes out of the word to know something, to know something for yourself. And uh, pasada refers to a kind of faith or confidence that is uh, peaceful that has a serenity or a, or a peacefulness to it. And uh, some translators translated it as unshakable confidence, um, maybe unshakable conviction, or maybe, because the first word avecha means what, what you can know for yourself, it's a, a faith or confidence or conviction based on knowledge, based on what you know for yourself. And this idea that it's unshakable, like now I know this is possible. I had, don't necessarily, have, no, haven't necessarily, I'm not always, not always in touch with it, I don't always, I'm not there always, 
Um, but I know, I've had the experience, I know this is possible, I know these things can be put down, I don't have to be caught in their grip. And then be, have conviction, yes, this is worthwhile. To be on a path to become free of this. One of the reasons I liked, uh, especially this week, uh, the word conviction and its association with conquering is that uh, uh, sometimes the challenges we live under are huge. Sometimes people, you know, get sick and have stage four cancer and have all kinds of personal challenges and and losses in their life or there's, they live in war zones or they live in, uh, in times of a social crisis like we are now in a sense with uh, uh, this COVID-19 virus and where our whole society is really turned upside down, just dis- been disrupted. And uh, so much of the life, and especially in places like here where we're in the Bay Area, we're, we're sheltered in place where there's a, a laws put in place that tell us you have to stay home. And except for essential, you know, things to go out. That, that's, that's a huge disruption in our life. And in this time and place, what is called for? What is it that we really want to muster and arouse within ourselves? And what is becomes most important? And, um, and if we're cha- the more we're challenged, the more we're upset or afraid or distressed by all the changes that we're facing, um, uh, the greater is the value of conviction. I know something, I know, I believe, I value, I have faith in something different than the conviction that fear should drive, drive the car. I have conviction that something, that I, don't, that I don't have to kind of live in the distress and act and be motivated by my distress. There is another way. So to have faith and confidence that has power in it so that we're willing to engage our practice, to be honest and clear and present and compassionate for our experience of this life. That we, That's the direction to go. That's what we want to base our life on. That's what we will base our life on rather than mindlessly perhaps or habitually succumbing to some other forces which are not beneficial for us. To have conviction in doing what is beneficial. To have conviction that there is a possibility of freedom and overcoming the obstacles we live under. Especially those that are psychological obstacles we have. It's not easy. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes love. It takes compassion. It takes a lot of care and but it's worthwhile. And I hope that uh, as you develop and continue in your practice, that you also will develop a peaceful, maybe even happy conviction in the value of your practice. Thank you.